Now, yes, do you remember we introduced the concept of random walk and we said that a random walk is this partial sum of IAD random variables. And when these random variables are very simple objects, like they are dichotomic random variables, they are, they are some sort of generalization of a Bernoulli in which they can have, they can attain two values like plus one, minus one with a given probability, this is what we call a simple random walk. And when the probability of jumping plus one or minus one is exactly the same, we call this random walk symmetric. Now, symmetric random walks are extremely useful in many applications. They are very common, uh, not only in financial mathematics, but they are also very common in physics, in chemistry, and in all the fields of, of science. In financial mathematics, these type of processes are typically very useful to price certain type of options like the American style. Now, the question of exercise one was to consider a symmetric random walk, so something that is the sum of random variables. Each one can be plus one, minus one with probability P. The probability P is the same, so it's one half. It's a symmetric random walk. And uh, we are just considering the sum of these random variables that are independent. It's very important. All the random variables are independent. If they were not independent, what we are going to say in a second will not be true. Now, what you are asked to verify is that the, the expectation of Sn, where Sn is our random walk, it is equal to zero, and that the variance of Sn is equal to n. Now, the fact that the expectation is equal to zero, it's, I guess, simple in the sense that we know that each one of these random variable x that constitute our Sn are just variables that can have two values. One value is plus one, and the other value is minus one. Each value has a probability of one half of manifesting itself. So it's clear that the expectation of the single variable x, it is zero. Because I can be plus one with probability one half, I can be minus one with probability one half. If I take the expected value, what do I get? I get one half times one plus one half times minus one. So it's plus one half minus one half equal to zero, okay? This is simply the expectation of each single x. Now, S is defined as the sum of the first n x's. But what do we know about the expectation? The expectation is a linear operator. So if I write the expectation of Sn, this is by substituting the definition of Sn equal to the expectation of the sum for i from one to n of xi. But since the expectation is a linear operator, the expectation of the sum is equal to the sum of the expectations. So I can take my E inside the summation and it becomes the summation for I equal to one to N of the expectation of XI. Now, every expectation of XI is equal to zero. So I'm just summing N zeros. The sum of N zeros is zero. Okay, so the expectation of Sn is easily proven to be zero. Now, what happens for the variance? For the variance, we have to be a little bit careful because what we have is that the variance of each one of these random variables is one. How can you show that? Because the variance of a random variable is equal to the second moment minus the first moment squared. Now, the first moment we know already is equal to zero, and the second moment for each one of the axes is equal to what? To minus one squared times one half plus one squared times one half. Now, minus one squared, it's one. So it's one half plus one half equal to one. Since we don't have to remove anything because the first moment is equal to zero, 
the variance corresponds to the second moment and is equal to one. And this is true for each one of the axes. But there is another thing that I know about the axes, and it's the fact that all the axes are independent because I'm assuming that the collection x1, x2, up to xn are iid, and one of the i's is independent. Now, if two random variables are independent, you may recall that the variance of the sum of two independent random variables is equal to just the sum of the variances. Please notice that this is not true in general. It's not that if I take two random variables or three random variables of 20 million random variables and I compute the variance of their sum, the variance is always equal to the sum of the variances. It is true under independence or if you want, under uncorrelation. But in general, it is not true because we have the covariance popping in, okay? So if they are independent, we know that the covariance between the different couples is zero. So it's just the sum of the variances. Trivially, if the variance of xi is equal to one and I sum that quantity n times, would be no surprise that the result is n. So the variance of my symmetric random walk Sn is equal to the sum of the variances of the axis. And if I consider n different random variables, it's just n. So the variance is equal to n. So for what concerns a symmetric random walk, we know that the expectation is equal to zero and the variance is equal to n. <laughs>